Hey, what's up? Mike with Maxonics here today to talk to you about the MaxLink MLX100 Lincoln Sync Bridging Module. Up here at the top, you have a master slave mode, and this allows for linking multiple MaxLinks. So, if you're going to be linking multiple MaxLinks, you must have a lot of amplifiers. Your second setting is your low pass filter. Here's your output level control. This is a test tone. It's got an off and on switch at 65 hertz. Subsonic filter. The input level control. Phase. Your bass boost. The bandwidth and the frequency, all for your parametric bass EQ. And here we have a clipping indicator. All right, so now we're looking at one side of the end panel of the MaxLink. Here you'll see your master output for if you're using multiple max links. This is your slave input if this were the slave receiving signal from a master. Here's your input that would come from your head unit. And this would be your stereo uh, full range output if you were using an amplifier in line. This is for your bass remote input and uh, it's actually a, a nice level control. Uh, we'll get into that one later. All right, so here's the other side of the max link. And these are all your outputs. This is where the signal is passed from the max link out to your amplifiers. This top row that you see has a positive polar polarity output, and this bottom is all negative, and these sets go together. Then you've got your ground connection, you've got your remote, and then your 12 volt power. All right, so here's your BR1. This is your remote level control for the max link. You can see it has a normal operation. Normal gives you con complete control from this unit itself so that you can turn your output up or down. Bypass bypasses this completely and goes to full output, which is what's set by the max link. You also have your clipping indications. We have a red clipping, and then we also have a green light that will come on when you receive 9 volts of signal output. Now we need to go to your head unit. You'll set your head unit at 3 quarters of max volume. You're going to have to have a test tone disc for this portion. Set the test tone disc to 50 hertz and repeat. You'll take the RCA outputs from that head unit. Select one of those RCAs. Take your digital multimeter. Set to volts AC. Black to the shield out for ground. Red to the center. And you'll measure and note the signal output at this point. And that's going to be what you set your max link input voltage at. All right, so now we'll make the connection of the RCA outputs from the head unit to the input on the max link. And left or right doesn't matter because this is going in and it's going to be auto summed. Now locate the input level control and adjust that to approximately what you measured from the output of your head unit. If you go too far, you're going to see a clipping indicator as red. All right, now we're moving on to the amplifiers. And for this example, we're going to use two amplifiers. In this case, the Hyphonics Brutus BXI 2610D. You need to make the adjustments between the amplifiers so that they match up, so that you have identical output. So the first thing we'll do is we'll prepare for the signal coming from the max link. You're going to keep your subsonic all the way at minimum. Turn your low pass to maximum. Base EQ will remain at zero. Phase at zero. And for level control, we're going to start out at approximately halfway on both amplifiers. In this case, both of these will be set to output master for the first setup. All right, and now we're ready to connect the max link to the amplifiers. Since we're only using two amplifiers, we can use the multiple parallel sets of outputs rather than using a Y splitter from each individual. So our first set will go from the A and B negative outputs to the inputs on our slave amplifier. Our second set of connections will be a and B positive output to inputs on your master amplifier. 
All right. Our next step is switching the test tone to on. This is sending a constant 65 hertz test tone to each of your amplifiers. All right, so now we come to the other side of the end panels where we're going to actually make connections and adjustments to balance both amplifiers. First thing you're going to do is set your digital voltmeter to AC volts. Take your positive and negative leads, connect those to the positive and negative speaker outputs on your master amplifier, then repeat that process for the slave amplifier, and take note of what that reading is. You're going to go to the other side of the end panel, and you're going to make adjustments on the level control to balance those two amplifiers out, so that at that point you know that both of your amplifiers have the identical output. Now we're going to make our connections from the amplifiers to the subwoofers. Our first connection is going to be from master positive output to your positive speaker lead. Your next connection is from your positive output on your slave and that goes to the negative on your subwoofers. Then we make a connection between the two amplifiers from the negative on master to the negative on your slave. So that's positive output from master to positive on your subwoofer leads positive output on slave to your negative subwoofer leads, jumper between master negative and slave negative. All right, and now we're back to the max link. First thing you want to do is turn your test tone off, and then we're going to begin making adjustments to vary the frequencies that are going to be presented to your amplifiers for reproduction. Your first adjustment will be your low pass. We're going to adjust the low pass to approximately 11 o'clock. It's going to give us about 80 hertz. Next is going to be our subsonic. This adjustment will vary based on the tuning of your enclosure. We're going to set this all the way to the right, which will be 35 hertz. So now the frequencies that will be reproduced will be between 35 hertz and 80 hertz. We're going to leave our phase at zero. That's a time alignment. Then we're going to work into our parametric base EQ. First adjustment we're going to make is the frequency that we would like to boost. In this case, we're going to boost about 10 o'clock. That'll be about 45 hertz. Then the bandwidth, that selects how many frequencies it's going to bleed into. We're going to go to 12 o'clock. And then the amount of boost. You never want to boost too much. You're getting into clipping. So we're going to boost right about 9 o'clock. Then the final adjustment with the system on is going to be your output level. This output level should be set with the head unit volume at whatever you made the input level setting at. Then you go to your output level control and adjust to the desired output for your system. Make sure you're listening for distortion, Watch for your clipping indicator. That's obviously going to show you if you reach a point of clipping, you need to back down. And then your output level is going to vary based on the input capabilities of your amplifiers. You never want to exceed what the manufacturer has rated those at.